you so much for attending to my talk. So security has been a really big topic I've seen in, in the open source uh, world, at least uh, this year, and also outside the open source world. Uh, for, so today, I want to talk about security, but also set light into a topic that sometimes is underrated and it's invisible, but it's so, so much important. And in this talk, I, I, I would like to tell you why I think this is important, the community angle. So first of all, I did a little bit of myself. My name is Ana Jimenez, and uh, right now I'm working at the Linux Sprint Foundation as a project manager in one of the projects called the Tutor Group, an OSPO uh, community of practice. But before that, I had a um, long background in open source. I worked for more than three years at Vitaria, that is 100% open source company firm uh, that was established in Madrid, Spain, that I'm actually from there as well, um, and focused on software development analytics. Um, also, I have been pivoting and gravitating a lot in, across all different teams and sectors. So I uh, hold a master in data science, but previous to that, I came from marketing. I didn't like it a lot, but I, I had that background and I'm proud also of, of my roots. And then I got more into programming, into development in Python, got into data science, and now I'm more into design and web uh, development and accessibility uh, angle, uh, pursuing a master in front end. So you know, across all my career, I have been able to talk uh, with developers. I have been able to talk with uh, business teams, marketing team, and uh, I've been feeling these different needs and different ways to communicate all across these different groups. Uh, but all the, the learnings that I've seen also is that uh, when talking about, in this, uh, in, in this sense, security, we are talking about two sides of the same coin. The challenges that comes with open source and the challenges that comes with security IT in, in this sense. So let's give you an example. Uh, when organizations uh, or when yeah, when organizations are developing software, uh, we are having a lot of different touch points across the supply chain uh, when moving from idea to launch of that product. Uh, that organizations must be taken care of. So, for instance, uh, in the, uh, when, when talking about dependencies, you need to, organizations need to know how to secure dependencies or how to secure the code. When dealing with containers uh, and with cloud ecosystem, like how to secure those containers, the infrastructure. So in all these different security touch points, there is already open source. So, you, as an organization, no matter the final product is proprietary or open source, the organization is going to be uh, dealing, needs to deal with these security touch points to build more secure software uh, and dealing with open source. Because nowadays, maybe it wasn't uh, 40 years ago, but nowadays, when getting to the final project, product, there are open source components uh, driving the back, the back stage of that product. Let's give you also a really concrete example uh, on the generative AI field, now that is so popular. So when thinking about how these new models like ChatGPT and so on has uh, flourished, uh, we sometimes forget like, well, there are a lot of the side of getting to that model working is about collecting data. It's about uh, putting frameworks to uh, create that model. It's about building a user interface for the user to interact uh, with that platform. So in all these different components that create this product that is powered by generative AI uh, model, uh, there are a lot of projects, like you, sometimes you need to import libraries from PyTorch, TensorFlow, you need to do web scrapping with Scrappy, you need to build a container with Docker, 
uh, you need to build a web application with React. So there are already open source projects, open source sol solutions that you are integrated or the organization is integrated as part as the, software, as the supply chain of the final product. So today I'm not here to ask the question on how to secure open source. I'm more, I'm more in the side of how to secure the technology stack of organizations and doing it right with effective open source integration. Because here is where, the, where we are landing now. And when thinking about, OK, how is open source affecting uh, all the whole technology stack nowadays, the modern infrastructure, you might have seen this popular image, right? the poo maintainer uh, being burned out. And organizations, I think it's normal for organizations to ask about, OK, so how is the working environment of uh, the community that sustains the open source projects that are critical to my organization? Or uh, do they need help with infrastructure? Infrastructure? Do they need funding? What do they need? Because there are different ways you can support them. And are actually maintainers in that project having issues with dealing with um, feature requests? Or are they actually like a really diverse community and an active community? So all those questions are hard for organizations to figure out. You know, you need to peel and go underneath a lot of layers to get that. So they need a connector. They, they need something that is able to interact across all units with the organizations and um, the out one side, the open source ecosystem. And some organizations have thinking that OSPO might be one of the ways. And I know like, there is a lot of hype around OSPOs, uh, but to get it simple, thinking about more not just like an entity, but more as a vehicle uh, that can take many shapes. You know, you can have it distributed, you can have one person, you can have uh, multiple people working there uh, that act as task connector between the outbound, the open source ecosystem, and the inbound, the organization itself. Let's give you some examples. This comes from the use case from the OSPO book project. Uh, that is one of the projects we are developing in collaboration with many organizations, apart from the tutor group, um, where they, um, they, they explain like how the OSPO, it's also structured into OSPO members, OSPO leaders, and they are directly connecting with the open source community, but they are also in the different business units uh, translating, you know, like it's not the same working with the security teams that with the legal team, with the IT and the developers or the marketing team. So they have to work somehow in parallel to actually uh, become these connectors. It's not that easy as just a straight line. And not just that, you also got need to get all this input, all this feedback, and also be able to uh, uh, translate it to management, to the ones that will actually put money and get this investment going in the long term. Another, another example is sports, and you can see that they are uh, taking, like they're trying to integrate this open source as part of as the whole organization in different angles, like inner source, uh, uh, through ambassadors, you know, through the product teams, but they have a big one that is false vulnerability lifecycle that is right there. There might be um, the, the infrastructure or the way the architecture to build the OSPO might be different, uh, but the main goal that is being these connectors still is the same. And as I was saying later, because we are talking about the two sides of the same coin, it is really important to know how to connect these two things. The community value in terms of open source community and the organization value. So the organization value in this specific um, spectrum, so in this specific talk, is going to focus on security. And the community value is going to be focused on the sustainability of those open source projects. And yeah, they have a lot of relations. So let's put 
let's move first to the organizational value, to the security. And let's think about the developers that are in those organizations um, and that either they want it or no, they are constantly in these security touch points adding packages to the software supply chain. But the problem is that developers, they like to create things. Like, they don't have usually security specific knowledge. And sometimes when they need to report on someone uh, in the organization, it can take long feedback loops. So they start thinking, okay, you know, security fixes are important. I got, I know that. Like, everyone is telling me that. But they are more important than meeting existing product deadlines. Like, I mean, I need to create. My manager is telling me that I need to have this next week. And what I'm reporting about security, maybe it's going to take one month. Is it worth it? Is it my role to do that? So there are different ways to overcome these challenges. One is automation. I've seen a lot of OSPOs um, helping on automate process on security. So develop developers doesn't need to take care on that uh, because it's already automated. So when talking about automations, right now, you're going to find private components. And maybe I, I guess that core organizations already have this sorted out. But now there is also open source components. So how can you automate processes in the dynamics of open source projects? One of the answers is having the OSPO that is working also with the open source ecosystem and the security working together to get that automation, like which tools should we be using and how to implement it and the processes. And of course, everything is not just automation. Everything is not just about tooling. Sometimes they just need a human side to ask questions. So OSPOs are also being there to be the support arm from the organization. And also, of course, as I said, working through security and defining policies and processes. But is all of that what makes um, developers to, okay, I know security is important, but I have an aid, I have help to make that happen and still meeting my product deadlines. On the other side, moving to the sustainability angle from the open source community, uh, we have seen so many maintainers being overwhelmed by community requests, uh, by bug fixes, and also keeping track on feature release. And you know what? This, that is usually the work for many developers in organizations that need that they get paid for it, usually some of these tasks, they don't get paid for all the work they do. So on a maintainer side, they might be thinking, OK, I know security compliance is important. You know, like now with all the new uh, Cyber Resiliency Act that is going on in Europe and so on, like I know like I still have better way in the open source project to like for security checks, but it's more important than releasing new feature requests. Like, you know, I'm not getting paid. Like I'm doing this because I love creating things. Is it really worth it? So one of the things that the OSPO is working also with the security is uh, getting employees from the organization to commit to that contribution, to, con to commit to those open source projects that the organization is relying on. So they are putting more hands to those maintainers. And also, the OSPO is directly working with the open source ecosystem to try to uh, understand what are their needs. Because sometimes maybe they don't need employees, they, ne they need funding, or vice versa. So they are working in parallel first with the open source maintainers to ask them, hey, what do you need? And the, on the other, or maybe there might be another layer that might be a foundation. Just imagine that this project is hosted under an open source foundation, that, so they will interact with the open source foundation to get to the maintainers and then with the employee contribution. And there are other ways 
not just upstream contribution, as I mentioned, funding and sponsorship, or even releasing security tools. Security tools that they are not critical to the organization's revenue, but they have helped you to, for instance, check security in your projects that you can open source and you can help open source maintainers to build more secure software also in the open source ecosystem. So here are my top three takeaways from this talk. The first is to understand that OSPO is not only about open source. OSPO is about integrating open source in organizations' IT infrastructure to have more improvements and help software development best practices as a whole. The second is that collaboration between the employees, the open source staff of the organization, the security teams, and the whole open source ecosystems is a way, or I will say like is the way to, come to offer a holistic overview of to get security coverage across the whole supply chain. And last but not least, I want to also give an important message that open source jobs are beyond open source. I know it's hard to like open source jobs, it's not just open source. Well, not nowadays because OSPO that at the end is open source specialists working in organizations uh, have now the important mission to achieve digitalization, innovation, and security, but doing that in a healthy and a continuous way. And just to end up with uh, a little bit of the project I'm working on, I came from the Tudor group that I mentioned, it's a OSPO um, community of practices. Uh, you don't need to be a member to contribute to what we are doing. All these learnings, all these thoughts, uh, were thanks to uh, the amazing community and contributions that uh, share their ideas and uh, their journeys, journeys. And we have a bunch of different resources available for everyone that would like to take a look. And uh, we are the largest and most active OSPO community of practice nowadays. Uh, we have uh, meetups and community ambassadors working um, in the Americas, uh, well, Central America and North America right now, across Europe, in China, in India, and in Japan right now. And about the OSPO book that I also briefly mentioned, it, uh, this is uh, a thing that we are trying to put together and welcome all the foundations and other open source projects to also contribute to this. We, right now, we are more than 20 active contributors. I can see some people from here that are contributors for that book uh, from all around, well, not all around the world, but we have a bunch of different regions right now and a diverse community. And uh, there is the uh, page that, by the way, we are trying to migrate ospobook.todogroup.org to ospobook.org because we really want this to be something where community outside Tudu can also contribute without feeling unwell or uh, strange. And there is also the Get it Started, where there is the working repo. Um, and that's all for my side. Any questions? Thanks a lot, Anna. So the open source program offices are a really hot item, I think, through, uh, throughout the world, also the, uh, with government organizations. We'll have a bit more on that before uh, the lunch break. But are there any questions for Anna? Uh, so a question from my side is a bit combining your talk with the previous talk also from uh, Melanie. I think the value, I mean, for me, you don't have to convince me. I am already open source advocate for a, for a long time. But also, I am in the part of business development in, in the company I work for. So I think sometimes uh, companies, they don't see just the value because some people is, is having a hard time to maintain because all the resources. So companies see numbers. They see financial. Numbers are called. Mm -hmm. So how we can also use all these tools together with use cases and, and business numbers to them. I think that's something that is lacking right now. And I have not found sources yet. So I think that's something we need to be also doing evangelism and also having also this kind of data open to the public to be able to convince easily all these organizations. So I want to hear your thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, regarding use cases, um, there are 
a few communities, OSPO communities, like I, I came from to the group and that is something that we are trying to do it. Like we are a neutral space where organizations can share their journeys. Uh, it's true that for instance, regarding like for instance, um, I feel like there are not a specific use cases where organizations said we did these S bombs and are, these are all the dependencies we have. I feel because this is more sensitive, uh, but I will say if you haven't tried, so like get to go to the S bombs, get to go through all the dependencies, and so to your managers. You know, you, we are using this open source. We are using uh, for this project that we are developing. These are all the dependencies that we have and we are not doing anything. And also, for instance, uh, I don't know if you are aware of the open SSF scorecard, but uh, it's really interesting so to check like all the security checks and see all the vulnerabilities. And sometimes there are projects, I'm really sorry, you will find projects that are really not maintained. And having that and giving that to the company or to your organization and saying, look, all these vulnerabilities that you are just missing out, uh, have worked a lot for organizations. But I can say, like, um, I would love to see more on these use cases being served. I know, like, sometimes there are organizations that they feel uh, kind of, um, yeah, like they, they, they don't feel secure to, to serve it openly. There are also, we have touch points calls. So this is more like under Chatham House rules. And I'm trying also to see, like, how people can speak in there, at least, uh, to serve best practices without saying this organization is doing is having this issue or this problem, but more like capturing these learnings, capturing the value, and serve it in an anonymous way. So, I mean, in the website, you have more information. I'm just talking about Tudu because I'm from Tudu, uh, but I know like there might be other communities doing similar stuff. During the last year's uh, severe layoffs, I think OSPOs have been really affected. I'm wondering if Todo has, has collected the impact of the companies that made the layoff and then regretted for not having the OSPOs. Mm. Uh, so every year we do like an OSPO survey. I think I, I share a few of the insights. Uh, so that came from the OSPO survey that we publish every year. Uh, and we get, try to get a pulse on the status of OSPOs. So coming to your question, we haven't done that yet, but uh, this year we are putting a lot of efforts. Uh, we know like there were so many layoffs and we really want to understand if uh, taking away the OSPO has had some impact. So maybe that is something to also include for, for today's this year um, report and, and survey to work on. We will start on a April, I think. Any other questions? Any owners? Uh, one question uh, I had, I was wondering if I had an elevator pitch for the CISO director to convince the community angle and importance of that in regarding to security. What would be your pitch? Oh, well, um, <laughs> I, I think this is more about like, it's, you will be more like having this knowledge to on the organizational side uh, because, well, you can send this kind of talk of presentation and try to, and he can get like a high level overview. But if you want to deep dive on the concrete challenges, I, I don't know. And I, I think that's because having these neutral spaces in, the, in a community to talk, it's key because no OSPOs are different. So we need some kind of a space under Chatham House rules or uh, a secure um, space and framework to share these journeys. And I won't be me, there will be other organizations that says, okay, this is what worked for me. And maybe you can take some inspiration from that. So I don't have an answer. I just say, uh, collaborate with the community. Thanks very much, Anna. Are there any other questions? Just a quick one. Yes. Thank you for the talk. Um, how do you think that the CRA will influence the OSPOs and the open source projects in general? 
Uh, I think this is an ongoing discussion. Like, uh, I don't know if you're aware that, so the CRA just uh, released the last, uh, so they were a lot of iterations, and now they have these open source stewards, and uh, I think the the open source stewards and and the and the other. So there are like two actors. I'm sorry, I forgot the name. So it's more about understanding well where your organization, like what actor is your organization at, and um, and think like how how the OSPO can help. But as I said, I think this is an ongoing discussion because the CRI CRI just released a few weeks ago. So I, I think the organizations are just figuring out and thinking on that. Thanks a lot, Anna.